because some of the scholars, they mention a story of a man that the angel of death came to him. The story may not necessarily be authentic. I think the concept is right. The meaning of the story, the gist, the moral of the story is right. The angel of death came to him. And they say that the angel of death used to come to the people in the, in the form of a, of a human or a form that the person can see the angel. And so the angel of death came to the man and he said, I'm here to take your life. And so the man said, why, why, I'm not ready. I am not ready right now. Why are you going to take my life for? Give me time. The angel of death said, okay, I'll give you time. The man said, I ask for one favor, that when you're coming next time, you let me know. The angel of death said, okay, I will do the second favor that you asked for. And so the angel of death left. فَمَرَّتْ سَنَةً مِنَ السِّنِينَ Years went by, time went by, and the angel of death came to the man. The man said to the angel of death, Did it, didn't I say to you, give me a sign when you're coming? He said, I did give you a sign. I took everyone around you. I took your neighbor, he's gone. Your friend has gone. Your brother has gone. Your parents are gone. I took all of the people around you. That was me telling you, I'm coming for you. If all of the fortress and the people around you are going, it's you. Walidarika, the scholars, they used to say that death of a person is a lesson for the one who's alive. Because the one who's going, is going. When you see someone die, it's you who's being spoken to here. It's you who's being spoken to. And death is coming to all of us. Wallahi. Wherever we hide, wherever we try to go, Death will come to you even if you go into the highest building and you cover yourself in money and everything. Death will come to you. Allah says, The death that you're trying to run away from. The death that you want to run away from and you want to ignore. It wants to meet you and it will meet you. Whether you like it or not, it will take you. Naam. He said, Araka, I see you. Remember, this poetry, the scholars, they disputed and they discussed who is he talking to. He's saying to a person, Araka, I see you. Who is he speaking to? There are many opinions like, and it seems like He's talking to a friend, childhood friend. Some scholars, they say that it was his son. Like in, from the context, when we go in, we will see that it was a childhood friend. A person they grew together. He said, Araka tuhibbu. And the man, his name is Abu Bakr. We're going to see it later. He's going to say, Abu Bakr, da'utuka law ajabta ila ma fi hadduka law aqalta ila ilmin takunu bi imaman muta'an in amarta wa in nahita. And he will say in another place, Abu Bakr, فشفت أقل عيبي وأكثره ومعظمه سترت فقل ما شئت في من المخازي وضاعفة فإنك قد صدقت. So it's a person who he grew up through childhood. He said أراك I see أراك تحب عرسا. You love a woman. He's is is trying to compare the dunya to woman now. أراك تحب عرسا ذا تخدر أبتها الطلاق الأقياس بتها. I see. That you love a woman. This woman, she is the takhidirin. The takhidirin means what? The Arabs, they used to love the woman that never used to leave the house. The woman who used to be in her inner chamber. A woman who's never exposed to the world. She's hidden from the eyes of men. No one sees her, no one lusts her, no one in, none of that. He said, I see that you're looking for I see that you're looking for a woman who's in her inner chamber. In other words, you're looking for the hidden things in this world. You want to unravel it. You want to bring it out and you want to enjoy it. Look what he said after that. The wise men lacking. They have divorced that dunya. A divorce la raj'ata fihi. A divorce that you can't take that woman back. Pay attention. Here he says, Abatta talaqa hal akiyasu batta. Abatta means they have refused and divorced and turned down this woman. The dunya here, the woman here is what? 
is the dunya. How have they turned her down and how have they divorced her? But ten, the f- divorce, which is referred to Baymunatil Kubra, where when the man divorces the woman, he can't take her back. He can't what? He can't take her back. He mentions in his, the beginning of his Kitab Riyadh Salihin a statement of Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i, he said, Inna lillahi ibadan futana, talaku dunya wa khafu fitana. In this, from the slaves of Allah, ah, inna lillahi ibadan futana. Allah has in this world noble, righteous slaves. Allah has that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do those slaves do? Inna lillahi ibadan futana, talaku dunya. They divorce this dunya. And they feared the fitna of this dunya. They feared it. They looked at this dunya and they observed it. And they looked around and how this world is. When they recognized the true reality of this world, and they came to know that this world is when they realize that the living man, the true man, the man who has ghira for his deen, he has no place to live in this world. There's no room for him. What do they do to this dunya then? They turn this whole universe and this whole world into a what? A boat which they want to get onto the other side of the, the, the land. I mean, they use this world to just, just accumulate righteous actions and just go to the other side, which is the day of judgment. Meet Allah with good deeds. So this statement of the author, Rahimahullah, Araka to Hibbu Irsan da Tahidirin, Abatta Talaka Hal Akiasu Batta, it goes in line with the statement of Imam Shafi'i that he mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. It was narrated that Ali ibn Abi Talib in one day, Qabad ala lihiyat, he grabbed his bed. وَبَكَى بُكَاءَ الْحَزِينِ And he cried the cry of a saddened person. And then he said, يَا دُنْيَا دُنْيَا غُرِّي غَيْرِي Deceive other than me. Go deceive other people. Don't deceive me. لَا حَاجَةَ لِي فِيكَ I have no need for you, dunya. I have no, I don't want you. Hey hata, hey hata, whatsoever, whatsoever. I have nothing, nothing at all I want from you, O dunya. Qad bay, qad, he said to him, Qad bin tuki thalath, and I have divorced you three. A divorce that I don't want, I don't want to take you, dunya. For umruka, the time that is spent in you is very short. Wa majlus, wa majlusuka. And the sitting in your gathering is haqir, is very low. The gatherings where you're spoken about dunya is very low in my eyes. kabir, and your dangers are very severe. And then he goes, ah, min qillati zad, but I'm sad that I have very little provision, little provision, to take with me the day of judgment. Ah, he said. And the journey is very long. And I'm alone on that path by myself. So those are the great scholars. Rahimahumullah. Naam. Tanamud dahra wa yhaka fi ghatidin biha hatta idha mittanta mittanta bantha. He said, Tanamu, you sleep. He said, you sleep. Tanamu dahra, you spend your life sleeping. Heedless, he means here. Wayhaka fi ghatitin. You're sleeping. You're just relaxed. And when you die, you become aware of what's happened. You wake up from your sleep. You're heedless about everything. Naam. فَكَمْ ذَا أَنْتَ مَخْدُوعٌ وَحَتَّى أَتَى لَا تَرْعَوِي عَنْهَا وَحَتَّى He said, فَكَمْ for how long are you going to be deceived by this dunya? And how long are you going to be fooled by the, gl- 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 the gl- glamours and the glitters of this dunya? 
When are you going to wake up and realize the true reality of this dunya? When are you going to wake up and get up from your sleep? Naam. Aba Bakrin da'awtuka law ajabta ila ma fihi haddhuka law aqalta. He says, Abu Bakr, I have called you, I have advised you, I have spoken to you, if you obey. To what? I have called you to something that in it is great portion for you. That is, if you take heed of it. And if you take it serious and you benefit from it, meaning... I've advised you an advice of a mushfiq, a person who's concerned for you, a person who wants good for you. Law ajabtani ila dhalik, if only you can accept that from me. Naam. Ila ilmin takunu bihi imama, muta'an in nahayta wa in amarta. What I'm calling you to is, he said, ila ilmin, I'm calling you to knowledge. Takunu bihi imaman. In this knowledge, when you attain it, you're going to be a what? You're going to be an imam. You're going to be a leader. That's what you're going to become. The knowledge that he's speaking about here is the Islamic knowledge. You become a role model. Muta'an, you're going to be one who's obeyed. If you tell the people, do this, they will do it. If you say, don't do this, the people say, okay, the sheikh said, don't do this. Muta'an in amarta wa in nahita. You will do it. What the Shaykh says, right? So when he commands, if you learn this knowledge, when you command the people, they will listen to you. And when they what? When you prohibit them from something, they will stay away from it. Well, the scholars, they said that the alim, his words are taken and his statements are taken without any military or police to enforce it. So, a leader... He, he says something and then if you don't do it, there's a punishment. Police is going to enforce it on his behalf. Like in not the scholar. And that's why Allah said in the ayah, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ Allah said we made them leaders. Allah made them leaders. When did Allah make them leaders? Like in, when they were a people who gained beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. Two things. Two things, when they gained, Allah said, we made them imams. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا Guiding to our paths. Like in, how many things do they have to have? Two things. Beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Allah Ta'ala, He made them leaders. The Prophet said in the hadith, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا Anyone who Allah wants good for them, He makes them understand the religion. It's a sign that Allah loves you. Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn Hajar, both of them said that the opposite is true. If you see Allah does not give you the knowledge of this deen, it's a sign that he doesn't love you. If you're deprived from this religion, understanding and comprehending it, it's a sign that Allah does not want good for you. That's what they said. And if you see yourself excelling in Islamic knowledge, and remember, when we say the Islamic knowledge, the deen, what do we mean? Ilman wa amalan. It means that your, your knowledge and your understanding is good and your actions are also good. If you see both of those are excelling, it's a sign Allah wants good for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves you. Allah is pleased with you. Well, one of the statements that really touched me was the statement of um, Al-Imam Al-Tufi, rahimahullah. Al-Imam Al-Tufi, rahimahullah, he said that the way Allah chose the prophets. Didn't Allah not say, Allah knows who he's going to make a prophet. He said that the way Allah chose prophets, he also chose those people who's going to give the knowledge of the deen to. They were chosen. They were selected from the rest of the people. The people of ilm are chosen by Allah. Not everyone is given this deen. Are we all together. And that's why Waki ibn Jarrah al Ru'asi, when Shafi'i complained to him, we're going to come to that later with more details. And he said, Shakotu ila Waki ibn Bisu'i Hivdi, Farshadani ila Turkil Ma'asi, Wakala in al Ilma Nuru, Wanuru lahila Yudani Asi. I complained to my teacher Waki ibn Jarrah al Ru'asi about how my memorization is weakening and how my learning is becoming not as it used to be. And then he told me, Stay away from sins. Why? 
Because look, how can Allah give you this religion when you're going against what he's saying? It doesn't work like that. Are we all together, brothers? To be honored with this deen, you would have to what? You would have to uh, please Allah Taala and follow him. And Allah will then honor you with the religion. Some of the scholars, you know what they said? They said that the knowledge that is given to you, it is given to you, and then Allah Taala waits to see whether you're going to implement it. And once you do, more is given to you. Just like a mother, when she places food in the child's mouth, she doesn't give him more until he swallows what's already been given to him. That has to go into his mouth and his stomach. After he's taken that food in, then a mother gives an extra food. And that's the same with knowledge of the deen. You've taken the previous knowledge that you've taken. Have you implemented it? No, you're not going to get more. Implement what was already given to you. And then you'll get more. Naam. وَيَجْلُ مَا بِعَيْنِكَ مِنْ غِشَاهَا وَيَهْدِيكَ الطَّرِيقَ إِذَا ضَلَلْتَ Knowledge will remove that which is covering your eyes. If there's something that's hiding things from you, knowledge will clear it for you. The beauty and the benefits of knowledge is that it shows you everything. You will realize what is it for you and what is it, is, which, what is it against you. Are we all together, brothers? If you don't have knowledge, you're a blind person. You know what you are? As the scholars, they say, you are mayitin inda mughassilin. You're like a dead body. And a person is washing you. Sah, brothers. The sheikh is washing you. He's telling you, go right. You can't do, you don't know anything. So the jahil who doesn't have the deen and doesn't know anything is like that. He's like a dead body who is in front of the one that's washing him. He's moved, he's tossed around. You can't choose anything for yourself. Like in when you gain knowledge, you learn what is for you and you learn what is against you. What are you allowed to do and what are you not allowed to do? Before that, you are a what? You're in darkness. You're in darknesses upon darkness. But even if you stuck your hand out, you will not be able to reach what you're looking for. Ali Hassan al Basri said a very powerful statement. He said, If it wasn't for knowledge, the people will be like the cattle. The people will be like the what? Cattle. Pay attention here. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, which one did he ascribe to himself? Because a lot of people say the difference between us and the animals is that we have aql, true or false? Huh? Okay. Did Allah ever refer to himself as aql in the Quran? Has Allah ever referred to himself as aql? Ah, brothers, has he ever used that name for himself? Has he ever attributed himself to that? But has he ever referred to himself as the one who knows has ilm? Yeah, then ilm is higher than aqal as well. It's a level higher than aqal. Are we all together, brothers? It's a person who's wise and smart and has knowledge as well. Aqal is, knowledge is higher. Knowledge is what? It's higher than aqal. So if people lose knowledge, they are what? They are they're worse than the animals. Naam. He said, Rahimahullah, In the gatherings, you will be a, you will be a considered a person who's, who's carrying a crown. You're like a, you're the leader of the people. You're not a leader, Aslan, but everybody in that gathering will see you as a, the leader. This is what knowledge does for you. In the assemblies and in the gatherings, you're the one that's wearing the crown. You're the one that's raised, risen. And that's what Allah has said in the Quran. Allah raised the believers from the non-believers. And within the believers, who did he raise even more? يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ 
Allah says that I raise the station of the people of knowledge. Their level is raised. The poet he said, and the poet here is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib, and he said, Man fadru illa li ahli ilmi innahumu. Virtue is for who? Except the people of knowledge. All of virtue is really for the people of knowledge. They are ones that will guide you to the truth if you ask them for it. The virtue of a person is a person's virtue is connected to what he can perfect, what he knows. And the people of ignorance, the greatest enemy that they have is the people of knowledge. Remember this, brothers. Remember this statement. A person who makes a cult and a group and makes the group follow him and abide by him, whenever a person of knowledge comes, he gets angry. Anyone who has understanding of the deen annoys him. Why? Because he's going to take that what? He's going to take that uh, veil that's covering the people's eyes and he's going to show them the reality and the truth. This one doesn't want that. What does he want to do to the people? He wants to keep the people in darkness. Huh? Are we all together, brothers? He wants the group and the cult to be like that. So, All the time, all they speak about is those who are qualified, all those people of knowledge and understanding of the religion. They cross him out. Next one, cross him out. So, who they want is those who have no knowledge. And one of the tendencies of people of ignorance is that they belittle sciences that are very important in the religion. They will belittle. You say to them, Aki, study uh, fiqh, or study aqidah, or study hadith, or study usul al fiqh, or study nahu, or sarf, or balagha. You know, study the sciences. Very good. It will help you, inshallah, to understand the deen. And he will say to you, Why do we need it? Uh, it's not important. Automatically, you know he lacks that science. The reason why he's insulting that science is because he lacks it, he doesn't know it. The poet he said, There was a man called Sahal, that was his name. And the poet said, It has come to our attention. That Sahal has rebuked the science. He's belittled the science and said this is... And he's praised ignorance of this science. It's sciences that Sahal doesn't know. That's why he's talking about it. It's science that if he was to know it, he would never have belittled it. And then the poet finished his line of poetry with something very funny because he said, and to be pleased with ignorance is Sahal. It's easy. And his name was what? Sahal. And learning the science was easy for him. It was Sahal. But he doesn't follow his own name. Are you with me, brothers? So this is important. The people of knowledge, Allah gives them station and rank in the eyes of the people. They honor him. They respect him and they admire him. Look at these great scholars that we know. I'll give you one prime example. Ata ibn Abi Rabahin. Ata was from, and we have to understand the Arab culture. This is haq. We have to mention this. The Arabs, they took before Islam slaves. They were slaves. And from the slavery that they took, with different ethnicities and different people like in Arabs they had anafa for a black person to control them arrogance stubbornness within Islam Allah raised a people through their knowledge Ata ibn Abi Rabahin Ata ibn Abi Rabah it was said that he had a jal no he, not, he didn't have a sit he was the mufti of the haram haram after Abdullah ibn Abbas after Abdullah ibn Abbas died, the people used to come to Ata ibn Abi Rabah and the leader Sulaiman ibn Abdul Aziz said, no one's allowed to give fatwa except Ata ibn Abi Rabah. 
Rather, Sulaiman ibn Abdul Aziz himself, the leader, he sat with his children under Ata ibn Abi Rabah. Ata first of all prayed, and he finished his salah, and he said, Salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum. And then Sulaiman ibn Abdul Aziz, uh, Abdul Aziz ibn Malik ibn Marwan, he waited, a leader waited calmly for Ata to finish the salah. When Ata finished the salah, he said, I have a question regarding Hajj. He said, Ask. When he finished asking the question, Ata responded, and as soon as he responded, Ata left him and went back to uh, the halaqa and the dars that he had in the haram. Suleiman, his children, they said, Dad, they're the sons of the leader. They said, Dad, why were we so humiliated in the presence of that man? And he said, Did you see that what, what happened to us? And they said, Dad, we saw it. And then he said, That's what happens when a well, that's what happens when you don't have knowledge of the deen of Allah. This man has something that we can never buy. Allah raised him subhanahu wa ta'ala with the knowledge that he has. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ We'll carry on after the salah, inshallah ta'ala. One of the brothers, he corrected me after the, before the salah. He corrected me, he told me that the... Uh, is not Sulaiman ibn Abdul Aziz or Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Uh, correction. That came to Ata ibn Abi Rabah. Another point that I was going to say was Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He makes a person a leader, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and chooses them because of knowledge. We all know the famous ayah where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. We know the famous ayah where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he says, Inna Allah astafahu. Allah is the one who chose him alaykum over you wa zadahu bastatan fil ilmi wal jism. What did Allah first mention that he chose him for? Ilm. For he mentioned strength, Allah mentioned knowledge. So a person being big and strong, that's not leadership and that's not, that's not, you can force people if you want to. Like in the first, leader is the alim. Are we all together, brothers? And the raising of the people, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he chooses, Darajat, Allah chooses the people of knowledge. The Prophet said in another hadith, Inna Allah yarfa'u bihada al-Qur'ani aqwaman wa yada'u bihi akhareen. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He chooses a people through the Qur'an. He raises them. You see a little kid leading maybe people who are older than him in age, people who are senior than him in... Because he memorized the book, Allah raised him to lead the people in what action? The first pillar after the Shahadatin, right? After the Shahadatin. Now. He said, Knowledge, the benefit that it has is, while you are alive, you will benefit from it. It will maneuver you. It will protect you from the pots and plans of shaitan. It will protect you, it will benefit you, it will bring you good. The benefit in knowledge will come your way. مَا دُمْ تَحَيَّنْ whilst you live وَيَبْقَى ذِكْرُهُ and your, the remembrance, your remembrance will remain when you go. When you die, you'll be remembered. People remember Al-Imam Malik, Al-Imam Ahmed, Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, Rahimahullah, they remember them. But does anyone remember the doctors and the businessmen at the time of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari and Al-Imam Ahmed? They died, they went, this khalas, because they worked and they lived for themselves. But these people, they lived for the deen and they lived for the religion of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he, he gave them a remembrance. Walidharika the poet, he said, Who's Ali ibn Abi Talib? He said, فَفُزْ بِعِلْمِ اللَّهِ تَبْغِي بِهِ بَدَلًا Be successful and choose knowledge. Don't try to take anything over knowledge. And nasu mawta, the people are dead. When they die, they're dead. وَأَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ أَحْيَاءُ but the people of knowledge are alive, the way they've been spoken about. It's like he's with the people. Every day he's there. Are you with me, brothers? 